people of YouTube, Wayne Hackman here, aka Waxstar. It's really good to see you, and today I just thought I would do, well, a little bit of a story and a Q&A uh, connected to a couple of videos that seem to be quite popular at the moment. I started YouTube, oh, it must have been over 10 years ago, and um, I've always subscribed to the idea that I just want to post things that I find interesting and hope that other people out there may find my experiences, my adventures, my thoughts interesting as well. And I, I've done some videos on how to build your own wireless internet service provider or WISP. And, and that's what I want to speak to you guys about today because I, you know, there are about 60,000 people have watched those films and I've had a huge amount of response to that. Uh, lots of questions, probably out of all the videos done, more questions and comments on those videos. And I, I want to just create a little Q&A video because people have written lots of positive things, have, have asked for me to support and sponsor and help them. And, um, and so I want to just, just take a moment to just perhaps answer some of the regular questions because I've had tons and tons of comments just to go through those questions and answer them as best as I can. I'm quite a practical guy and when I see a problem I try to come up with a solution and I have a full-time job. I work in a, a boarding school in Kenya uh, in quite a rural setting and one of the issues there was that members of staff wanted to connect to the internet uh, uh, so that they could c contact home, watch Netflix and things like that. And, and people were using their cell phones, uh, but data is quite expensive when you're buying bundles through the network. And so I thought there must be a better way. And so I approached some big companies and said, hey, would you come and put an internet service into the homes and a lot of them turn around to me and say no, no, not interested, you're, you're too far away and you're too small fry. Until I found a company called Access Kenya. Now Access Kenya, I have to say, have been great throughout the whole process. They've prov provide, provided on the whole a really reliable service and they connected me with some guys that had some technical know-how. And so what we thought was, when they came to the site, they, they, they suggested to me, well, you can put some aerials here, connect to our service, and then you can redistribute it and, and send it towards the homes. And so we found the highest spot on the site and that they ran their internet connection in and there I used some equipment and redistributed it across the school site. And then what we did was we shared the cost. So we're a cooperative internet service provider. We don't make any profit. Any profit we do make is put back into it so that perhaps if we need to upgrade equipment or repair stuff, we have the money to do it. So I've never made any money out of this at all. I, I've done it out of self-interest because I want a good internet connection into my home and so do many members of staff. And at the time we only had half a dozen people that were interested. But over the, the three years I've been running this now, I've gone from those half a dozen to over 50 customers. And it's become quite a big thing to handle because I do this all in my spare time. I'm a layman. I don't have any IT qualifications. Uh, I've just taught myself and uh, I have been grateful for those of you who are qualified IT professionals. You know, even in your comments, you've suggested solutions that have been really, really helpful. It's legal in Kenya at the moment. And it's legal because I'm redistributing business internet. If I was to redistribute a home provider, should we have those people here, I suspect I would breach terms and conditions. But I've spoke to my internet provider and they're very happy for me to do what I do. And at the moment, there's no laws saying that I can't redistribute internet. That may change, um, but for those of you who have asked, is it legal? You need to do some research on your in your own country. We're using business internet and I have got approval from my internet service provider. So is it legal? Yes, at the moment it is legal here in Kenya, 
But if you're asking from the context of your own country, you need to do some research on that to make sure that if you threw up your own wireless internet service provider, that you're not going to, to do anything illegal. I, I scraped together about $1,000 and that set up two base stations, got me connected and got the first initial uh, six houses connected. Now that may be a lot for where you are, that may be less, but the equipment that I've used, um, you know, because they were relatively cheap at the time, I used these uh, Ubiquiti uh, Nano Loco M5s and they operate on a five gigahertz Wi-Fi signal and I placed these on my base station and also on the houses and they talk to each other. So these are the Ubiquiti uh, Loco Nano M5s and, and I can get these for around $50, $60 for where I am. Again, you may or may get those cheaper from where you are and there are better models, more advanced models and um, better antennas based on the same sort of thing. So investigate Ubiquiti products, they're really, really, really great. Um, all the Ubiquiti products become with um, PoE injectors. In each of the homes, I, I found the, the cheapest router that I could, could, could find, and these are TP-Link routers. Um, they have, their, they, uh, you know, their, they have Ethernet um, for the WAN port, and I will connect those Ubiquiti devices to the WAN port on this. And, and I get these for about $35. Again, you might be able to find something that's cheaper or a better product. Of course, I have to buy in ethernet cable and run ethernet cables from uh, the house to the roof, um, poles and mounting systems and point them towards the base station. In the base station, obviously I have a number of these. Um, I also have the device that uh, Access Kenya send data to us and, and they use a sort of a Motorola canopy system um, which again is very similar you know it uses different frequencies to the to the um, to the ubiquity devices um, and they send that from their base station which is six miles away in the base station I started off with these Microtik devices this is a router board and the, the great thing about these these operate just as normal routers but you have more configurability on here and what I did was was I gave each house their own uh, local IP address and then I set limits on how much people can draw so we don't have people hogging bandwidth now because I've gone from the six households this was working fine to over 50 I've upgraded my router board to to a more advanced rack mountable product but the principle still remains the same some people say well you can use different ways of authenticating I sure you, I'm sure that you can I have no idea how to do that and I found that by giving everyone a static IP address on their local domain I'm, I'm able to control the amount of bandwidth each house has thus not one person hogging the, the total internet. The five gigahertz is less congested. It doesn't beam as far, but if you do your antenna alignments correctly, you can get, you know, you can get uh, speeds up to 300 megabits between the base station and the home. So you've got more than enough bandwidth to push the, the type of internet that we have. And we rent about 30 megs uh, uh, up and down of business internet uh, from Access Kenya, which is shared across uh, those 50 ha homes. Um, people are probably saying, well, surely you can get more. We live in rural Africa. And if we lived in, obviously, a city, we would be able to access other companies and other service providers as well. Lots of people are asking me for email addresses that I can give them uh, encouragement and run you through what I've done. Uh, do you know what? I, I would love to be able to contact everyone on here and write lengthy replies. I just don't have the time, so please don't take offense if, if you send, look, please give me your email address. I want to, to write to you and get your thoughts and stuff like that. Uh, I, I, just, I just don't have the time, but it's one of the reasons why I've created this video. 
So lots of people from all over the world saying, this is great, I want to do this, I'd love to do this, this is fantastic, um, uh, we, we, we've used your model, we, we've got great customer base as a result. Keep up the good work, I would love for you to, to let me know of your projects and, and if you can do it better than me, tell me, please tell me. I'm, I'm a layman, I keep echoing that. Everything that I've taught myself, I've taught myself by reading uh, internet forums, educating myself online, watching YouTube videos. I've never had any formal training on networking and stuff like that. Base stations are connected to a power supply, um, which are connected to UPSs, which are also connected to generators. So, so if the power goes out, uh, the UPS take up the slack in the short term and then the generators kick in. The homes, well, that's a little different. My house fortunately has a generator and UPS, so I don't lose connectivity. But some of the homes that I connect into, uh, you know, when the power goes out, their devices uh, disconnect and, and obviously they have to wait until the power comes back up. But the base stations, unfortunately, they have UPS for the initial short term and then they are connected to generators. Uh, so as long as there's fuel in the generators, the internet connection is up. To be honest, I've got these bad boys on all of my base stations and I have had not one failure on the base station uh, over the last three years. The, these Ubiquiti products, if they don't get submerged in water, are fantastic. I, I, I can't um, credit them enough. They just, just work and, and are reasonably easy to, to configure. Look, I'm in rural Kenya. So there aren't many big corporations that serve uh, that rural Kenya. But a lot of these corporations will, will have very affordable internet prices in big, bigger cities. And so, you know, if I was to do the same thing in, in perhaps Nairobi, for example, uh, do you know what? Uh, the, the competition would just be very, very difficult because you've got companies like Safaricom, Access Kenya, Liquid, a whole variety of people who already offer home service uh, and, and can do it for a lot cheaper than I can. So and, and I'm, I'm prepared to, because this is a cooperative thing, you know, in a year or five years time, if, if one of these big companies comes in and offers a better service, you know, I'm prepared to say, look, um, my network has, has, has had its time, let's move to one side uh, and allow people who, with a lot more expertise to come and do a better job. I'm, I'm very prepared for this network at some point to close, to make way for something that's bigger and better. But at the moment, you know, this is a system that works fairly inexpensively uh, as we share the cost. We get a fairly reliable connection and we're not paying huge bundle prices on our phone. Anyway, so it leaves me to say uh, to all of those positive comments, to all of those people who have taken the time to watch my videos, and, and look, they're not high production values. I'm not a professional video editor. I haven't made it my life, um, although I do enjoy making YouTube videos. Thank you, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Please keep clicking on my videos. Uh, I, I don't just create technology videos, I create t uh, videos on anything that interests me. So, you know, hit, hit, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon. You know, keep watching, keep rating and subscribing. Um, I really, really appreciate it. I have set up a Patreon. And if you would like to, um, to help me make more of these videos with better equipment and, um, you know, I, I would really value any support that you might want to give me on Patreon. And, um, you know, I realize that I'm small fry compared to a lot of YouTubers out there. My production values aren't as half as professional as, as a lot of YouTubers out there. But, but if you want to help me, um, by way of saying thank you for the information that I've passed on to you, um, I, I'd appreciate that. And, um, and maybe I can upgrade my equipment or do some more interesting videos in the future when I can do that in my holidays. So thank you for watching and uh, as always, have one on me.